Good morning, beautiful people of God. Good morning, beautiful black people of God. What a blessing it is to be in the house of God one more time. I'm so glad to be here. And I'm so glad to see each of you here in worship. I'm so, I was so excited this morning. I forgot I had quit the church last Sunday after Pastor Jones got through over at Bright Star. I, su I wasn't supposed to be here until next month, but I woke up and I was so excited I came back again. <laughs> and I am grateful to God to be here. We have um, been praying for the last 30 days for our young people eating and are seating for various things. And I just want to ask you one question. If you're here and you have seen the prayers manifested in the young people life that you were praying for, wherever you are, won't you just stand and give God some praise? Yes. 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 I saw him work. I saw him work. When we praise God for it, um, when somebody does something for you, it's just good manners to say thank you, isn't it? And we thank him for all of the things that he has done and he is doing in our lives. Welcome to worship. Our prayer team is here. You can find the order of worship on the church's website. If y'all got that new app, just open that app up and go to the website. <laughs> Or you can go to thefamilyfaith.tv and you'll find the order of worship for there. Our prayer leaders are in place and they're going to come and lead us at this time. One nineteen, one thirty three says, Order my steps in thy word, and let not thy iniquity have dominion over me. Let us pray, please. Dear God, I come right now thanking you first for waking us up this morning. Father, not only did you wake us up, but you closed us in our right mind. Father, you gave each and every one of us activities of our limbs, and you let us see this brand new day. Father, you touched our children that you loaned to us, and we want to say thank you. God, we thank you for guiding them. We thank you, Father, for just giving us, as I've always told my son, 42 years, he loaned you to me. And for that son, I say, thank you, God. Father, allow us to be good parents to them. To let us realize that it is our life that they see the example, that they are to learn to be the guiding that they are to learn how to, that what to be taught, that in order to know what kind of God we serve, that the Holy Spirit would, places that they go, he'll block them from going there. That's his job, to guide them and protect them. Sometimes they don't even know that he's on the job. But I know what he can do because he's done it in my life. Sometimes you'll wake up and say, I was supposed to be there, but I didn't go there. That's guiding and protecting you. Oh God, we thank you this morning. Holy Spirit, thank you for being on your job. 
God, we thank you for leaving us that comforter. For your word teaches us that you would not leave us alone. You said you was going to go and prepare for us, but we would not be alone. That you was going to lead somebody to guide us that we can talk to. Thank you, Lord. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Good morning, Peace for Rest, family of faith. Good morning again. Let me direct your attention to Matthew's 20th chapter, 27 to the 28th verse. Matthew's 20th chapter, 26 to the 28th verse. But it shall not be so among you. For whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister. Whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister to give his life a ransom for, for many. I am praying for the purpose of our young peoples. Father God, I pray for the purpose for our young peoples, that they will have a sense of direction which will go to find them the way to look toward you, God. Lord, bless them, O oh God, and keep them, O oh the Father. Show them and direct them, O oh God. Give them the purpose of life, O oh God. Lord, we need you, O oh God. So, Lord, we need you so, God, that we don't know what to do, oh, God. So, Lord, I pray right now in the name of Jesus, oh, God, that you would our parents, oh, God, screen our grandparents, and then we dwell what they need to be dwelled into our youth, oh, God. Bless them as they go forward throughout this world, oh, God. Keep your hedge of protection around them, oh, God. Show them the way. Direct them the way, oh, God. Don't leave them, oh, God, for they do need you. And, Lord, we need you also. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, church. In Proverbs 22, 6, you will find, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Please join me in prayer for our parents and guardians. Lord, we thank you for, the, for gifting us with your children and trusting us with such precious gifts. Lord, today we petition you on behalf of our children, and we ask that you allow the Holy Spirit to convict all parents and guardians that they would display a Christ-like character and behavior for our children. We also pray that our parents always provide proper instruction, interference when needed, and most of all, corrective action for this is what you have instructed us to do. Oh God, we've made some mistakes and we've had a lax in judgment sometimes. Lord, we ask that you forgive us. Lord, we also pray for your divine intervention in our children's lives and to continue to hold them in your powerful hands. This is the prayer of your children today. Amen, amen. Good morning, church. Um, I'll be reading uh, 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 5 through 7. And uh, when you get there, you'll find recorded these words. It says, And besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brother kindness charity. I'll be praying for self-discipline. Most gracious and eternal heavenly Father, our God, how we thank you this morning, Father God. God, we thank you for the music ministry reminding us on how we should worship you, Father God. God, we come this day, God, giving you the glory, the honor, and the praise for God, you've been better to us than we had to ourselves. And right now, God, we pray for self-discipline. God, we pray that you will restrain them from any unrighteous acts, God, and I pray, God, that you give them desire 
the hunger, the thirst for nothing but righteousness, Father God. God, right now we lift up these young men, Father God, the youth, Lord God. We praying, Father God, that you order their steps in your word, God, and let no iniquity have dominion over them, Father God. God, we pray right now that, God, you keep them, Father God. Protect them. Put a hedge of protection around about them, God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Good morning. I'll be reading Matthew, the 22nd chapter, verses 37 to 39. Jesus said unto them, Thou shalt love thy Lord, thy God, with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. We'll be praying for the passion of God, the children that have passion for God. We know what passion is. We have passion to do everything. But Lord, I ask you now to give these young people the passion to love you with all their heart. Lord, to trust you yeah. in everything they're going through. The ones yeah. that's going out of the school, the ones that's sitting in school. Yeah. Lord, they have a passion that they know your word, that when things come up, they turn to you. They don't run. They don't hide. They lift their hands before you and say, Lord, I know everything is possible through you. Therefore, when I stand before you in the latter days, all my talents will be used in the goodness and kindness that you have given to me. And therefore, they can see my light, see your light through me, dear Heavenly Father. No, where, no matter where I go, if I'm going, the kids are in there parties and everything they'll know how to step back and say no yeah. i have a desire to be with god yeah. and this is not of me dear heavenly father give them that peace that passes all understanding yeah. lord i know when it comes time and they just don't know where to go they don't want to tell mom auntie grandma whatever you have them in the hands yeah. dear heavenly father you keep them so when they feel like they don't own that they know that you the passion and desire they have for you your love and know that you can do everything but fail that they'll come to you, run to you, and say, what must I do to continue to live on this track and be a bridge to other people? In your son Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. I'll be reading from 2 Timothy, uh, chapter number 2, verses 22 through 24, and this will be from God's word. Stay away from lust, which tempt young people. Pursue what has God approved. Pursue faith, love, and peace together with those who worship the Lord with a pure heart. Don't have anything to do with foolish and stupid arguments. You know they cause quarrels. A servant of the Lord must not quarrel. Instead, he must be kind to everyone. He must be good teacher. He must be willing to suffer. Uh, this morning, we're praying for social media. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you today. Thank you for another day, dear Heavenly Father. Dear Heavenly Father, we understand that all of these prayers are for young people, but older people are struggling as well, Heavenly Father. We ask that you guide us each and every day, dear Heavenly Father. We ask that you guide us as we post our posts on social medias and ask that it touch people's lives, dear Heavenly Father. Not only looking for likes or judgments, dear Heavenly Father, but only followers from you, dear Heavenly Father. You, only, you are the only follower we need, dear Heavenly Father. We ask that you guide us, oh God, because we need you, oh God. Social media is a platform that is taking over lives, dear Heavenly Father, and ruin multiple people, oh God, but we ask that you guide those people, oh God, and you continue to push, push forward on us, oh God, because we need you, oh God. Social media is ruining us, oh God, but we ask that you continue to guide us, oh God, because we need you, God, on this platform, oh God, on our platforms, oh God. There are platforms that we as older adults don't know about, and that we ask that you guide those platforms, oh God, and give put positive words in those platforms, oh God, because we need you, God. And we just want to say thank you for another day, oh God, allowing us to be here to worship, and we ask that you just continue to guide all of us throughout this day, oh God, and we thank you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. We want to continue in prayer. And I'm going to come from 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter and the 13th verse. There have no temptation taken to you but such as in common to men. But God is faithful, who will suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. It said, but will 
the temptation also makes a way up to escape that you may be able to bear it. I want to pray for the temptation this morning of the young people because it's so many things that's going on that we don't even know about. And we that's a strong hope, temptation is. And Lord, I come to you this morning asking, first of all, for forgiveness. And I want to thank you for everything. Father God, you've been good to me. You've been better to me than I've been to myself. And I want to say thank you, Father. Father God, look on the children. TV is TV. We know that whatever the temptation is on TV, social media, and all that other stuff, it's not real. Some of it is and some of it isn't. But God, we know that you can rightly divide it if we ask for it. And then what they need to do as young people and us as adults to think before you do anything and turn from whatever it is because God, temptation is a strong hope. And I'll tell you that, I'll say it one more time, it's a strong hope. Father God, strengthen us to be better people and give us that love that runs from heart to heart and breath to breath because we need you. Can't get along without you. And we want to be ever so careful to give you the glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 The word of God for the people of God this morning is coming from Jeremiah 29 and 11. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. I'll be praying for our young people's future. Eternal God in heaven, we thank you, O God, for this day. We thank you for the many blessings that you have poured into our lives, O God. We thank you, dear God, that you woke us up and you started us on our way and you led us to the house of prayer, O God. And here, God, we can call upon your name, O God, for you hear it us, O God, for your ears not too heavy that it cannot hear us, and neither is your arm too short that it cannot save us. But we've come, dear God, leaning and dependent on the everlasting arm, trusting, God, that you can make the difference in the lives of our young people, O God. God, help us to help those that are near us, O God. God, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. But help us to continue to sow seeds in the lives of the young people, O God. God, we realize that the enemy is busy. He's roaming to and fro, Lord, seeking whom he may devour. God, we know that he wants to sift them as wheat. But we thank you, God, that we have an intercessor sitting at your right hand right now, O God, to send us the strength and the comfort that we need, O God. In those very times of trial, oh God. And right now, God, when the enemy comes in as a flood, help the young people to call upon your name and trust in all that we've planted inside of them, oh God. Help them to know, God, that no weapon formed against them shall prosper. Help them to understand that they are the head and not the tail, oh God. That they are seated, that seated upon a hill, oh God. That you are, that they are the apple of your eye, oh God. Help our young people to not be distracted and defrauded, dear God, by the enemy's devices, oh God. But keep them on that straight and narrow, oh God. Cause them to know that only what you do for the kingdom will last, oh God. God, strengthen our young people, oh God. We love them, oh God. You've given them to us. And we have not always been responsible, oh God. But right now, we decree and declare today, oh God, that these young people, dear God, their lives will magnify you in every way, oh God. Cause them to be good examples, oh God. Cause them to grasp hold to the promise of their destiny, oh God. We trust that you will. And we thank you right now. Thank you. Thank you for deliverance, oh God. Thank you for sound minds, oh God. Thank you for the boldness to stand for Christ, oh God. It's in Jesus' name that we ask it all. Amen and thank God.
Clap your hands. Here we go.
Y'all come on. Can we bless the Lord? Come on, will you? Will you give him all you have today? Amen. Church, this is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. I will rejoice and be glad in it come on bless god if amen i have nothing in the monitors thank you so so much amen i i i don't really have anything here or if you will amen amen all right i want to continue our conversation in Hebrews chapter 13 today I want to talk about contentment contentment look at verse verse 5 verse 5 says let your conduct be without covetousness Big Mama says covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For he himself said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. Let me just vote the house to see how many domino players are in the room amen amen i didn't say folk who play with dominoes i'm talking about those yeah who play dominoes i mean those have you ever been playing with somebody and they just aggravated you because after you played a couple of times, they told you everything that was in your hand. Yeah, that's, that's a domino play. I mean, you don't need the color-coded ones. You know, like the baby says, I ain't got no blues. <laughs> Just got some reds, you know. Yeah, amen. Well, while playing dominoes, there is this thing called the domino and to say that one has the domino means that that player at that time has control of the game. Even if they don't have the highest score. Sometimes, can the church say sometimes? Sometimes a player must pass up on an opportunity to score in order to protect the domino. Because good players know that taking a score on a bad play can not only cost you the domino, it could cost you the game. Here's what my daddy would say. 
All money ain't good money. Paul would put it this way in 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 10. He says, the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. And some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and they have pierced themselves with many griefs and sorrows because you probably grew up thinking one day I'm going to make a whole lot of money. Is that you? And when I win the lottery, amen, because I know some of y'all bought tickets this week. You don't want to say anything. You've said when you win the lottery, you know, you, you, you talk about all that you were going to do. But, but, but just read and research how many lottery winners are sleeping under bridges after two or three years. Amen. I have nothing, absolutely nothing here. All right. So, so listen, just know that money may fix some problems, but money will create more problems. Jesus says you cannot serve God and money. So there are just two things I want to tell you today. The first thing I want to tell you is don't be covetous. Will you say that? Look up and down your row and just say don't be covetous. I, I don't know you like that. I'm not in your business. I'm just doing what the pastor asked me to do. Don't be covetous now covetousness is the insatiable desire for more it's what the insatiable desire for more here's the problem it's the insatiable desire for more even if we don't need it do I have a witness all right, can I push a little further when you read the Ten Commandments? Not only is it the insatiable desire for more, even if you don't need it, but it's the insatiable desire for more, even when it belongs to somebody else. Do I have a witness up in here? How much happier so many of us would be if we kept our eyes off other people's stuff. Covetousness is manifested in selfishness, envy, idolatry, and greed. Repeat after me. Selfishness, envy, idolatry, and greed. One more time. Selfishness, envy, idolatry, and greed. Let's walk through it. Selfishness gratifies oneself at the expense of another. Envy is resenting that others have what you want. I was reading, um, I was reading last night, I, I, I wasn't going to share this, but y'all quiet, so you're giving me more time. Uh, th this lady, I won't call her name because there, there are three or four women in the here who have the same first name so so this lady was envious because her neighbor's yard looked greener amen so she decides to go over to her neighbor's yard when she looked back at her own yard it looked green then here's what dawned on her she said I was looking over at her yard, down at my yard. But when I got in her yard and looked over at my yard and looked down at my yard, it was then I discovered when I was looking over at her yard, I didn't see her dirt. Can I get a witness up in here, my brothers and my sisters? Well, let me just tell you this just in passing. If you water your own grass. Yeah. I, I 
been trying to tell y'all for years, baby, don't you hate on how green somebody else's grass is. You don't know how much manure it took. You don't know all the stuff they've been through. You don't know all the headaches they've had. You don't know all the prayers they pray. If you only knew, you wouldn't shout on her praise. You praise with her. Selfishness is to gratify oneself at the expense of another person. Envy is resenting that others have what you want. Let me throw this in for free. If God promised it to you, he can make good on his promises. Amen. But then it is idolatry when a thing or a desire replaces God. I said it's idolatry. Let's just say idolatry. It is idolatry when a thing or a desire replaces God. And one of the problems with us today is because we love our idols. And sometimes our idols are in the mirror. But then greed has been called gangrene to the soul. Greed is like a spoon a man uses to feed himself to death. The lie that greed tells us is just a little bit more. When will you have enough? Just a little bit more. But what I've discovered is too much is never enough. Y'all, 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 let's be honest. We've got a whole lot of possessions, but it doesn't look like we've got much peace. Do I have a witness? We have all of this stuff and mental illness has gone through the roof. Maybe if we put God in the place where we put stuff, our lives wouldn't be so, so miserable. Here's what Jesus says in Luke 12, 15. He says, take heed and beware of covetousness. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of the things he possesses. That's Luke 12, 15, right? Read that when you get home. Socrates said this, he who is not contented with what he has would not be contented with what he would like to have. Let me tell y'all what we, we, need to, we need to stop doing. Can we stop insulting God? Can we stop minimizing the grace of God? God gets you off the bus, put you in a cash car, and rather than you praise him, you'll say, this is just to hold me over. God gets you out of your mama's house, put you in a two-bedroom, and you'll call it a starter home. Do I have a witness in here? Baby, whatever it is, you better praise the Lord for it. I said, whatever it is, you better praise the Lord for it. It might not be as big as somebody else's house, but if you've got a roof over your head, you better be praising the Lord. It might not be a Mercedes Benz, but if it got you to church this morning, you better praise the Lord. Because watch this, whatever he gave me, I didn't deserve it. I'm looking for some more folk to be honest. 
I, I'm looking for some more people to be honest. I said whatever he gave you. You didn't deserve it. But he keeps on blessing us anyway. In fact, every time I turn around. He keeps on blessing. Can I get somebody to help me? I said every time. Come on, turn around. I said every time. I turn around he keeps on blessing me can I testify what I have he gave me what I know he taught me and where I am he brought me is he worthy yeah I know he's all right I know it's all right. Okay. There are some people in this room. I'm not going to call their names, but they'll identify themselves when I say what I got to say. There are some folk in this room who trust God so much they shout before they get what they ask for. Somebody been praying for something you don't know when it's coming through but you know that he you know he's true to his word. You don't know when it's coming through but what you do know is if God said it I said if God said it I'm fixing to start some stuff. I'm fixing to start some stuff. What if your next blessing was on the other side of your next praise? Show me how you're going to act when he comes through. Show me what you're going to do when he does that. I see you. I see you. I see you. What you going to do when he comes through for you? Yeah! Yeah! And listen. L listen. I I I've got some classmates in here. I got some classmates in here. So so Sheena and 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 Terrell can tell you before I ever got a church, I got a trench coat and a briefcase. Somebody better talk to me. I ain't have no members, but I sure look like a preacher. I ain't have no church, but I look like where I was trying to go. Baby, you better start acting like where you're trying to go. You better start dressing like you're trying to dress. You, you, you've been praying for a house. You better go look at some furniture. You've been praying for a hug. You better go look at some rings. Act like God's going to do what you've been asking him to do. You ain't got that car yet? Ain't got that car yet? Go and work on your credit. I'm getting ahead of myself. Don't be covetous. Don't be covetous. Be content. Can you say that? Well, you look at the folk around you and say, listen, baby, I don't want to disturb your nap. But Reb said, be content. See, watch this. Contentment is living independent of one's external circumstances. Let me tell you something. My mom had a lot of children. Yes, she did. Praise the Lord. 
Amen. I'm number 11. Thank God she didn't quit before she got to me. Praise God. But watch this. Socioeconomically, we would have been defined as poor. Socioeconomically, we would have been classified as poor. But my mama never told me we were poor. My daddy never told me we were poor. This is what my daddy said. You're going to get clean clothes. They might not be name brand, but you're going to get clean clothes. Amen. I don't know if my mama had an American Express, but Sears and Roebuck had a layaway. Every now and then I hear my mama tell my daddy take me up to the mall to pay on my layaway. But watch this y'all. Can I give y'all some layaway theology? See school was out in May. We didn't go back until September. So mama would go and put the clothes up in June. But watch this. She didn't put the clothes up in the size we wore in June. She put up the clothes in the size she knew we would be in September. I'm trying to help somebody. Maybe God is waiting on you to grow into what you've been praying for. Maybe God is waiting on you to grow up before he brings you out. Will you praise him for your layaway? I said, will you praise him for your layaway? You trying to figure where that's in the Bible. I have not seen ear has not heard nor has it entered into the hearts of me I said will you praise him for your layaway will, will you praise him for your layaway okay I got my receipt y'all I said I got my receipt the Lord is my shepherd I shall not walk Okay, uh, we, we got to get out of here. We got to get out of here. We got to get out of here. Contentment is living independent of one's external circumstances. Amen. You know what else? Contentment is knowing life is a gift and not a right. Come here, baby. Let me help you. Let me get you straight. You do know God doesn't owe you anything. You do know you don't deserve to be here. But will you thank him for the gift? All right. Contentment requires living from the inside out. What did I just say? Contentment is living from the inside out. Somebody in here got more on the inside than they got in the bank. Baby, you better get you some stuff they can't foreclose on. You better get you some stuff they can't repossess. You, you better get you some stuff the world can't. Thank you, Dr. Shirley Caesar. She says, this joy I have, the world didn't give it, and the world can't take it away. Will you just thank God that you got some stuff on the inside that will keep you when you ain't got nothing on the outside? I said, will you thank God that you got stuff on the inside Inside that'll keep you when you have nothing on the outside. Can I get a witness in here? I used to drive town cars, not Lincoln's cars you could only drive in town. One day, my car broke down I put my suit on my Alan Edmund shoes my necktie 
grabbed my trench coat and my briefcase and caught the city bus to Centenary College. And I sat there with pride because I knew it was temporary. Can I get you to smile, baby? I don't know what you're going through, but it's temporary. Can I get you to just wave your hand? Just thank God it's temporary. I don't know what it is. I don't know what your circumstances are, but it's just temporary. Contentment requires living from the inside out. See, nothing on the outside can compensate for what's missing on the inside. If you don't have any joy, a new car won't fix that. Because that only lasts till the smell wears off. Do I have a witness? It, a, a new house won't fix that, baby, because within 30 days, the mortgage company will be looking for you for 30 years. Somebody going to help me up in here. I'm just trying to tell you, baby, if you don't have what you need on the inside, it doesn't matter what you got on the outside. Now listen. Greed, selfishness, covetousness are all intrinsic. Nobody had to teach you how to be greedy. You weren't five minutes old when you realized that if you just haul off and scream and holler, some folk going to figure out what you want. And if they don't figure out what you want, somebody going to call them people. Do I have a witness? Greed, selfishness, covetousness are intrinsic. But contentment is learned behavior and life is its only teacher. As Paul says in Philippians 4.11, he says, I have learned in whatever state I'm in to be content. I've learned to shout when I got and shout when I ain't got, in case you hadn't figured it out in the last 29 years, y'all do know I plan on shouting every Sunday. I don't know what's going to happen over the course of the next seven days, but if the Lord wakes me up next Sunday morning, I'm going to come up in here and I'm going to praise the Lord. If you ever drive off and leave, church was sure dead today, baby, that's your fault. I mean, you do know, you do know, you might not be on the payroll, but you do know you're on the praise committee. And if you have a pulse, you ought to have a praise because he said that everything that had breath. I got time. I mean, go on, give him all your, what you gonna do with that praise? It ain't football season. Go on, give it up. I've learned. Then he says, I've learned the secret to contentment. The secret to contentment. What, what's the secret to contentment? Here it is. Our sufficiency is in Jesus Christ and not ourselves. Y'all waiting on something deep, weren't you? Philippians 4.13, Paul says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Let me help you. The key to commitment, to contentment, the key to contentment is not what one accumulates, but what one appreciates. Now, this gonna, you're going to think about this this week. What if God... Mm, Reduced your life to only what you appreciate. Help me, holy Jesus. H hear me, young people. Psalm 37 and 4. 
says this. If you delight yourself in the Lord. He will. Give you. The desires. Of your heart. I heard two people. Will somebody else say. Yes he will. Won't he do it. I see one hand over there. Two hands over here. If you delight yourself in the Lord. He'll give you. The desires of your heart. This may sound strange. But you, if you're a born again believer. You already have. What, and I've got in parentheses, who? In capital letters. You are longing for. It's not a what. It's who. And if you're a born again believer, you already have who you are longing for. It's not what you're looking for. It's who you are longing for. Let me help you. God created a place in the human heart where only God fits. Some of us have tried to fill that place with some other things, but they didn't fit. People can't fit in that place that God created in the human heart for God alone. Dollars, diamonds, and degrees can't fit in that place that God created for himself. You'll be frustrated with whoever's in that place because sooner or later you'll find out they ain't God. And they can't do what only God can. St. Augustine says, because God has made us for himself, our hearts are restless until they rest in him. Did you not know that the walk, the Christian walk is supposed to be daily? D daily. You, you can't, you, you shouldn't just call God every now and then. You, you understand. It's, it's, it's daily. I, I, I went to the dentist the other day. It was time for a routine checkup. And something flashed on the screen that blessed my life. And I couldn't wait to preach it. It said, you ought to come see us before it hurts. And, and maybe what God is saying is come to church, baby, before it hurts. You, you can come to church when all is well. You can come to church when things are going well. Don't just show up when it hurts. Verse 5, this is what God says. Here is the promise. I will never leave you nor forsake you. We've tried to leave him. We've forsaken him. But somebody over 40 other than me in here knows he was faithful to us even at times when we were not faithful to him you better thank God that he was thinking about you when you weren't thinking about him I'm going to move on or I'm going to throw this out there for free you may just be here now because big mama prayed for you when you didn't have the sense to pray for yourself. 
whole lot of folk over there have prayed Lord I don't know where my baby is I, I don't know what the boy doing I don't know who the girl hanging out with God she ain't been to church you know I didn't raise her like that God but touch her heart and break grab her by the reins of her mind here's what I'm trying to tell you you already have who you're longing for and I stand before you today happy in Jesus see some folk would rather have houses and land hmm. some folk choose silver and gold I'm through y'all these things they treasure and forget about their souls. But I have decided. What about you? To make Jesus my choice. The door is open today.